It's no secret that the Australian games industry has been hit hard by big studio closures in recent years. In 2007, over 1,400 people were employed in the industry. By 2012, that number had dropped to just over 500. But there still remains a group of passionate and innovative game makers following their own rules as independent developers. When I finished high school, you know, I'm a student, I don't really know what I want to do. So I decided to do a really big, you know, broad double degree that was in computer science and in multimedia. In the final year, I decided I was going to take some of the prototypes uh, and ideas that I'd been working on since 2006 and actually do something with them. I then decided that I would go off and make a commercial version of this and the next three years was me just doing that. I actually started doing computer science at University of Wollongong, uh, which was really fun. When I graduated, it was kind of right when all the studios closed down and I had nowhere to go, so some friends and I started our own little studio. We started out in the modding community, which is a really great place to meet developers because in the modding community, it's illegal to make money off your thing almost all of the time. So you pretty much only get guys who are doing it for the love of it. I got into games development because I saw a whole bunch of uh, games developers in Perth. We had a, a large studio come in and they shut down when the first financial crisis came through. And then they, all these people needed a place to be in to go, and so I just thought, I'll make my own studio with no backgrounding. I'm not a coder or a project manager or anything like that. I just thought these people deserve better. Being an indie dev can have a ton of benefits. Flexible hours, creative freedom, the ability to turn your idea into a best-selling game. It all sounds too good to be true, because most of the time it is. Well, it's been eight years uh, from start to finish and, um, you know, we've been through everything in that time. We've had publishers come and go, pull out, and uh, we've had accountancy problems, we've had currency issues that we've had to deal with. It seems like everything has gone wrong. When you're talking about challenges, people are always thinking like, oh, what was hard about the tech? What was hard about the design? Honestly, when you spend three years in a bedroom by yourself, the hardest challenge is just like actually getting through the process. The biggest challenge you face is time. I was having to manage a team that's mostly guys from the internet, people all around the world. I had a crazy sleep cycle. Coming straight out of uni without ever having worked in a bigger studio, we didn't really know how games companies were supposed to run, so we just kind of made it up as we went along. I don't know whether we really had any one person in charge, so we had a lot of heated arguments about everything. It's very difficult for uh, indie developers to get the kind of exposure that, that the bigger companies get. It's just to get heard, to get noticed, and to get the word out there about their game. When you first do it, you just really have no idea how to market. I mean, it does come down to just telling as many people about your game as possible and hoping they tell as many people about what they know as possible. The marketing side of things is difficult for absolutely everyone. No one wants to do it. Everyone would rather just work on the game. But if you are that serious about what you're doing, then you have to get good at that as well. Financial security can be hard to come by as an indie dev and consequently many find themselves walking a fine line between thriving entrepreneur and penniless artist. We were students so we were already kind of used to eating noodles every day anyway. We mostly all had part-time work doing other things whether it was teaching and we just kind of used that money to fund our games. I need a day job because I have a small family, but I also have a private investor who was willing enough to have the confidence in me to try and execute this. Well, I work uh, a lot of different small contracts. At the moment, I'm on a big contract, so that's full time. The games I develop at the moment is more of a professional hobby. That's James Rover to you, you filthy pirate. So what we did with, with Endgame over the last 10 years we do some work, work for other developers or other publishers and we do that project and then after that we take the money from that and pour it into Fractured Soul. And we work on Fractured Soul for a few months and then we go back and do another contract and, and that's how it rolled for 10 years. I live like a monk, I don't really spend anything anyway and so when I decided I was going to do this, I knew that I had some savings built up. Then I was fortunate enough to, you know, be one of the grand finals winners and make something unreal. So I got another, like, $25,000 from Epic. It's taken us two years to develop it, um, on and off. Uh, last year we got funding from Film Victoria. We got about $39,000 for it. Um, so I was able to work on it full time, but, I mean, for me, that, that, that isn't me being paid full time. That just means my rent is paid for a year. 
The good news is there seems to be more financial help on the horizon. In addition to many state-based grants, the federal government has pledged a three-year investment into the games industry, totaling $20 million. But will it be enough to get the Aussie industry back on its feet? So we developed um, a couple of programs. One is a program that supports game companies and one is a program that supports individual games. These programs are for more experienced game developers who want to take the next step. So what we're trying to achieve is greater employment, more games, more profitability for those indies that are still here and want to stay here. I think it's great that the industry is getting these shot in the arm from the, the federal government, but we do need more. I mean, THQ alone was spending, you know, it had 200 people in the country. It was spending $2 million a month in the games industry on development. $20 million over three years is a small slice of what was being spent here. It's not going to radically get us back to where we were, but it's a great start. Being in Victoria, we actually have access to quite a lot of, um, of help already. Not to say that we, we couldn't have something that is a bit more consistent. It always feels like our help is going to be kind of pulled. Like, we, we don't have any sort of sense of a long-term view of where this funding's going to be around in three years' time. Why then do indie devs persist? With so many challenges and obstacles to overcome, creating a complete game sounds like more trouble than it's worth. The thing that motivates you, and, and, and I believe that most game developers, particularly indie developers, are in this boat where it's, it's, it's almost a very ego-based uh, industry. You know, you go to a trade show and you see people playing and loving the game and, and you come back and you just want to work on it, you just want to see that again. It's, it's, it's kind of like a drug. Each game is really a very personal experience. It's almost like children. And creating something like that is just an amazing experience that you don't get anywhere else. If, if this whole thing is a flop and doesn't make any money, I'm still going to be doing it. I'll just have to get some terrible job on the side. I'm always inspired to make games because I, I love games and I love programming games. If I stopped making games, I'd stop being me. When Blue Tone Studio was shut down and Team Bondo shut down a little bit after that and we've had most of the studios have closed now, we sort of had this crash uh, of what we used to be and we're still in the early days of what we're going to be. And I think it's fantastic to look around to see how good the indie games are. But I think we've still got a long journey ahead. We still need to mature, still need to be making better games, trying to compete more on a global scale in terms of the quality and the level of innovation. Um, so yeah, I think we will become a nation of indie developers, which is a great thing. Um, and we're well on that journey now. <laughs>